Good evening, everyone. This is the uh, Monday, June 28th, 2021 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. Pursuant to an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, this mood, uh, meeting is being held using pr remote participation and we're gonna have a, conver a conversation about that uh, later on. Um, and it is being recorded. I think it, you all heard that. Let's see if I had that, okay. Um, we always begin these meetings with general public comment. If there is anything um, that the public would like to bring up at this time that is not already an agenda item, we'd be happy to um, entertain your question, comment, participation. If you could just uh, identify yourself and your address. And it doesn't look like we have anybody, so we'll move on. Uh, we have one set of minutes from December 21st and all of you should have received those and reviewed them. Does anybody have any uh, comments that they'd like to, corrections? I, I sent some corrections to Sarah because it just seemed easier. There were just some minor spelling I errors that I found. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're I posed there. spelling issues, so those have all been corrected. Okay. Is, is that true for you, Dylan? Also? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, if I, there's no other comment, um, if I can entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Any more discussion? Okay. Sarah, vote. Right. Martha? Yes. Harvey? Wasn't on the commission at that point. Uh, should I, <laughs> seems like oh. I ought not to vote on that. All right, uh, Dylan? Yes. Jonathan? I abstain, I wasn't there. All right, and Barbara? Yes. Okay, that's it. I have a, um, I wouldn't say brief, but a, a chair's report with a number of items on it that I wanted to update everybody on. Um, the first is, if you recall, and I think everyone was on the commission when we reviewed this, if not, um, forgive me, a application for um, a certificate of appropriation is for a window replacement project at 330 Elm Street. Um, if you recall, that is the big brick house that's near the St. Mary, not St. Mary's, the other, the church at the north end of the district. Um, and we denied the application. Um, the property owners appealed that to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission through the uh, process, approval process that is part of the state statute. And after a very lengthy review by preservation plan, planner Shannon Walsh, she reported back that um, we acted re reasonably in denying a certificate of appropriateness and not making a term de determination for a certificate of hardship for replacing the existing windows. Um, so I think it um, that we acted appropriately. So that's, I think, uh, good news for us in the sense that uh, we really stuck by our guidelines and um, performed admirably in our role as commissioners for that district. Um, Sarah, in response to that, is in the process of compiling some information about property owners for the future about historic window restoration. So that will be available. Um, the second item is that the North King Rotary, or roundabout, I think it's called um, here in Massachusetts. Um, that our vote that we took at the last meeting on this item was misstated in the Republican, which was stated May 26. Um, the article stated that the commission voted to protect the North King Street location where the state recently backed off plans to build a traffic circle and the commission voted that the site should go undisturbed and that is not accurate. 
I wanted to just for all of you uh, remind you what that vote was in case uh, you're approached by individuals. Um, also, if you are approached by individuals, it's always better to refer them on to Sarah, the planning office, um, because they have all of the um, backup material and the exact language and have been involved in this project from the beginning. Um, we voted to rescind the initial comment um, from 2012, our vote in 2012, and provided an updated comment on the project as previously proposed would have um, would have an adverse impact on the archaeological site in agreement with the finding of adverse impact that had already been made um, established by MassDOT, the Federal Highway Administration, and the consulting tribes. Um, Sarah did send a request to the paper to correct that officially at least in their digital version, and they did not respond. I would just, um, does anybody have any questions about that? Any of the commissioners? You're clear? Okay, great. Uh, we are, uh, one of the items on the agenda is the Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, our representative to that committee has uh, left the commission. That was Pauline Fogel. And we're going to be talking about that later on. We need to put forward a, forward a replacement, uh, a nominator replacement. So we'll talk about that later on. Um, I wanted to just encourage all of you who are not um, aware, there is a big effort going on to rethink the design of Main Street. And I don't know, I'm assuming all of you subscribe to the Gazette. Maybe you don't. This has been covered extensively in the paper. And um, Sarah sent out a link to a, um, a forum that was held earlier uh, last week, I believe. I would just encourage you to read about it and stay up on it. It's not something the commission is likely to get involved in, but it certainly is a historic street pattern with a number of um, historic buildings on it. And I think we just need to stay on top of that. Can I just ask if, are recordings of, of those meetings available? If I just go to the city's website, because I could only stay for the first hour of the most recent meeting. You're, you're <laughs> muted. Yeah. Oh. Um, they, they should be, Barbara, if, they're, if it's not immediately apparent where those live, uh, I can look into that for you. But they okay. are definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, for all of those who um, did not attend, the Memorial Park on Village Hill was dedicated on June 5th. It was a pretty great turnout, even though it was a very hot day. Um, so that project is uh, moving on. Um, I also just wanted to alert everyone, this is just for educational purposes. Um, there are several entities that uh, inform us on an ongoing basis about history, local and regional, and also about historic preservation. I just wanted to mention um, two. One is right here at home, and we have representatives from that organization here tonight. Um, Historic Northampton you know, has continuing programs going on. Um, they have one coming up July 3rd on Frederick Douglass, which looks great. Um, so if you're not a member or you're not familiar, please you know, um, just check, it, check out their website. And then the other is Historic New England, um, which is based in the Boston area, but they do wonderful uh, free um, virtual programming and they've had great programs all during the pandemic and continue to. Um, we can put those two uh, links to those two organizations um, in our minutes, so everyone has those. Um, just two other items. One is uh, we have a new commissioner coming on probably later on in the summer after the swearing in happens. His name is Steve Moga, and he is an associate professor of landscape studies at Smith. Um, he is also an urban planner and a preservation planner. And he was um, a, put forth um, and nominated by the Western Mass um, American Institute of Architects, the Western how, Mass. How do you spell his name? Um, Steve, and then Moga is M as in Mary, O, G as in George, A. Oh, okay. Thank you. And he'll be coming on later on in the summer. Um, he's going to be a great asset to our, our group, I think. Um, and then finally, 
May You may all know this, maybe not if you're not doing a lot of virtual public meetings. Um, the governor has extended the virtual meeting option until um, the end of next March, basically April 1st of 2022. So we um, as a group need to decide whether we want to continue meeting virtually. We would rather um, do it live. Um, do people have feelings about that one way or another, which they prefer? I'd, I'd like to see a mixture, you know, one one month, one thing, and one month, the other. Anyone else? Well, I think meeting in person is better, but I see some advantages for, you know, if somebody's not even in town, they can still attend one of our meetings. Um, I don't know if anybody's doing hybrids where we're there, but people can still join virtually. I, I don't know. We're working on a live viewing option where people will at least be able to watch the meeting live, but won't be able to participate. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, there's some bugs to that that have, hasn't, haven't really been addressed yet. I think for me, at least through the summer, it might be nice to keep it, keep it on Zoom because of the travel stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you feel, Dylan? Yeah, I agree. Through the summer, our our as the library reopens, our schedule is in constant flux. So um, it can be hard to know where I'm going to be at five o'clock on a Monday. Um, mm -hmm. but just for scheduling purposes. Okay. Yeah, I certainly feel. Uh, I I have see advantages and disadvantages to both. I, I think it's wonderful that we've had such great participation from the public over this last 18 months. It's been great. Um, I also miss seeing people's faces. And I have to say, Jonathan and Harvey, I think if I saw you on the street, I probably wouldn't recognize you. <laughs> no offense, but I've never met you in person. Of course. So, uh, so um, that would be, um, yeah, so it'd be great to just get together as a group. So maybe we'll do July, August, um, and then we can decide at our August meeting whether we want to start up in September and it would be the end of September. So it's still three months away. Okay, great. That's all I had for my chair's report. Um, so the next item on the agenda is um, the work on the Shepherd Barn and Laurie Sanders and Betty Sharp, the co-directors of Historic Northampton are here. I just wanted to remind the commissioners that the um, city holds a preservation restriction on this prop, the entire campus. And uh, we are the stewards of that uh, uh, restriction on behalf of the city. Um, we are charged with reviewing any major work proposed um, to ensure that any changes are made um, in coordination and with respect for the historical integrity of the property. So Betty and uh, Lori, we did receive your uh, summary, and um, would you like to present that or something else? <laughs> okay, it's all yours. Okay, thank you so much, Martha. Um, also with us tonight is Ann Marshall, who is our architect on the project. And so she'll go over some of the plans. I'm not sure if we did include in that packet, although one of them is something like 25 megabytes, both the state and national nomination, as well as the city's deed restriction so that everyone can kind of know exactly um, what, what the parameters are for the deed restriction, as well as the, um, the national registration. In terms of the national registration, the barn is, is not one of the main uh, buildings recognized, but it listed as a contributing structure. That being said, you know, I think Betty and I, we have a really strong commitment to trying to do things as, as, um, as, as appropriately as possible. Um, and so um, in that summary sheet, which I don't know, did everyone receive, receive that? Yes. So we tried to, and Betty, feel free to jump in. We, tr we tried to, um, you know, kind of go down through. And I think many of you, we, I've been here in front of you before. Um, some of you are familiar with the building, but um, to, to identify 
what's going to stay the same, what's going to change, um, not only in terms of alteration, repair and replacement, but then actually some new structures. And we're really not only working hard to kind of maintain as much of the uh, historical fabric, but we have some serious structural issues that we have to address. And we want to make that building um, as, as functional as possible, not only for us programmatically and in terms of the pres preservation commitment that we have, but in terms of a public resource. So um, part of that is we're really trying to work with it, achieving ADA compliance. And so, um, you know, there's all these multiple goals and uh, we have some CPA funding, we have some private funding, we'll need more funding. Um, and so what we would love from you tonight is not only your reactions, but any suggestions you have as Betty, um, I'll pass it to you. And then, and then Anne goes through the plans as they are at this moment. Great. I think um, the point in our restoration, which Lori's saying is that we want to make it look as much like it does now. I mean, it is the carriage barn to the shepherd house and it'll still have that appearance because it'll be the same barn on its same footprint. Uh, there will be a shed addition to the back, but from the street, it'll, it'll look the same. The landscaping around it will be much improved. Um, and we're looking forward to being able to use it for the public. I mean, it's one thing to keep it. It's another thing to use it. And it'll be used in two ways. One is uh, as a kind of a, a performance space on the inside and a gathering space, a place where we can do activities and classes and all that sort of thing. And the second um, uh, part to it is that the interior of it will be an, an exhibit so that there'll be something to see when um, it's not open for, for a performance. So we have an amazing collection of um, weather vanes we have a few enormous shop signs from Main Street. We have all those great collections that we just, we want to be able to have the public see. So that's, so, and then I guess I could say a third function for it would be this. Um, we often have concerts on our grounds and in the L of this um, barn will be bathrooms. So there'll be more public accommodation for any kind of um, big public thing we might want to do outside. Can you talk a little bit or somebody talk a little bit about the ADA uh, effect on, on what you're doing? Yeah, it's, um, I'll let Anne jump in, but I'll just say it's really uh, complicated um, and we're really doing the best we can. So not only are we following um, uh, locals, uh, the, the, the normal, you know, ADA compliance, but we've been working with a specialist um, who lives in Washington, DC, who works now for the um, Institute for Human Centered Design based in Boston. And she used to work in the civil rights division of the Department of Justice. So we're, and she's gone through those plans over and over again. Okay. We're being really conscious of that. Thank you. And are you, would you like to um, present anything? It's, you're up and you're muted. Yeah, would you like me to share my screen? I think that would be. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Okay. You walk us through where you are. Okay. You can see my Revit drawing. The, um, my drawings are a little more clear than the PDF. So I chose this, this uh, route to go. Um, it's funny, I didn't know exactly what Betty and, and Laurie were going to say, but I had four things written down that, you know, I saw as priorities and they're exactly what they said, which was uh, maintaining the existing look of the barn, you know, as much as possible, maintaining all the fabric that we can um, that isn't damaged. Um, also arresting the continuing water damage. Um, at the base of the barn. So trying to address that by, by raising it up a little bit and creating a stone uh, foundation that um, would help protect the wood at the base of the barn. Uh, also making 
changes to accommodate new uses, which um, gives it a reason for being, um, a reason for the community to engage with the barn. And lastly uh, was the ADA component, you know, making it as accessible as possible. Um, we're also working uh, with someone who's, who's sort of developing the outside of, of the grounds here, uh, met the other day. But the, the main piece out here would be, if you, you, everybody can see my screen, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, try and zoom in here a little bit. This is an existing tree back here, just to give you some context. Um, the house up front. And um, one of the things we're planning to do is create this, this plaza out front, this stone plaza that would be the same elevation as the new barn floor that, that we would have to, to put into the barn. And the idea is that all of that would be at the same elevation as the current floor of the L. So everything would be at the same elevation. So we would eliminate steps and ramps and things of that nature. Uh, we would develop the landscaping so that it slopes up to this, this plaza. Um, and so you wouldn't have drop-offs and that sort of thing. Um, we're also the, um, the um, children's program that takes place out here uh, this will all have to be developed, but we're also talking about the idea of uh, kind of a small shed uh, that would be in keeping material material wise to the barn and so forth that would help give some privacy from the activities that take place here to the house here. And it's also located next. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me one second. That's not the commission commenting. <laughs> I apologize, he found a fly and our dog goes crazy if he sees a fly, so. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so this, um, the current shed that's behind the, the barn occurs in this location right here, essentially where we're talking about putting this shed addition onto the back of the barn. So there's currently there and um, we would be building something that'd be much more usable. So let me move to the next. The next drawing. Um, this is taking us inside the barn and I know it's a little hard to see. You can see the stone patio out front, the existing barn doors here, which would be rebuilt uh, to match their current, current look and materiality. Uh, at the base of them, we might have a, a metal a splash guard just at the base of the barn to try and protect them from further deterioration. Um, as far as the inside of the barn, all of the structure still remains. We do have these um, kind of horse stall walls here that we need to open up to be able to really use this space. So the idea is that they would be pushed against this wall here so that we can still interpret the fabric and, and talk about how, how one of its manifestations um, then um, we, we're still having a fly issue, sorry. Uh, the two storage units that we're talking about putting on the back, one would be specifically used for storage. The other one we're sort of referring to as a green room. And, um, and that green room would have, you know, kind of a counter with some stools. It would have area for hanging clothes. There would probably be some movable things that would come in should a performance uh, should they be pre preparing for an actual performance. Uh, we also have an ADA compliant bench here. You can see the turning radius that's required and an area for someone to actually get onto that bench. Um, so these structures would, would be set in slightly from the, the face of the barn, as you can see. Uh, and the shed roof would would go from the edge of the barn all the way out here across and back so that it provides kind of a shaded area here. And, um, and then you can see the floor area here, there, there would be the need for a ramp to ramp down. It would be one in 20 to bring us back to grade. 
at that back area. Um, here in the L, you can see that we have two gender neutral bathrooms. We have a lockable door here so that when activities are taking place on the grounds that people can come in and use this and we don't have to worry about uh, people having access to the artifacts at times when we wouldn't want them to have that access. So um, there are two, two bathrooms and a water fountain and then we have a prep space that would be also be ADA compliant. Uh, the counter's at 32 inches, the sink, it's open space underneath here. Um, and there would be a storage unit here, floor to ceiling that could be accessed by anyone using that space. Um, the second floor, what we have um, chosen to do is actually remove the flooring, uh, but leave the structure to the space. And what that does is it really kind of opens up the space no one can, can really use that second floor anyway. It's certainly not ADA compliant. And it's, um, it used to have a big stair that sort of wound along this back wall to take you up to it. So it really kind of opens up the space, um, head height and for light and so forth, uh, while also providing the opportunity to place artifacts strategically and uh, activate the space in other ways. Um, let's see, as far as elevations, you can see from the front that, that we're maintaining uh, the windows, the doors, you know, and so forth, everything that, you're, that you see now, except that the, um, the wood deck that's sort of deteriorating has been removed and the plaza will be the way you access that space, the same plaza that takes you into the barn. Um, Repairs will be done to the roof. The slate roof will be maintained. We'll provide new gutters along the north and the south uh, barn eaves so that we don't have the, um, the rain dripping down on everyone. Um, any clabbers that are damaged and so forth will be replaced to um, match the existing as much as possible. And we'll have a new stone foundation that will wrap all the way around the barn, uh, as well as on the L itself, which has a floor that has to be replaced because it's um, it's sloping and it's it's not structurally sound at the moment. East and west elevations. Um, this is the, what exists right now: the barn and the L. And we would create a shed on the back that also has a small window that matches one of the other windows on the barn. Uh, and you can see it from the other side here as well. Um, the idea behind the slope on that shed was to, to strike a line at the base of it that sort of aligns with the existing L here, um, but also having it come up and not completely obliterate this whole side of the barn, you know, still maintaining some of the clavards up above, above the roof. And you can see on the plan, the existing sliding barn door back there, we have pocketing into uh, this area between the existing barn and the new green room. So I think Betty and Laurie, are there other things that you'd like for me to mention? Or does that take care of it? Maybe you could just show a few of the images of the interior, sort of how the, the, the projected view of what people would experience looking at some of the artifacts and kind of the volume of the space. Let's see. Few of these. This is this is if you're uh, in the space and the future stage, temporary stage might be here, and you're looking out towards the um, the green rooms there. Um, this is another view looking towards the front plaza. If everything were open and there were benches out there and some plantings and so forth, you know, this is this is what you might see. Um, Let's see. So, and can I just ask, can, can you go back to that 
we're looking through South Doorway. Sure. So, so the, um, what do we want to say? It's not the beam. So that, so that you see these, um, uh, where there are now sort of loft spaces, you're saying mm -hmm. that the outline of them, but there's, but there's no decking on that. That's correct. All the, right. all the structure mm -hmm. exists. It's only the, the flooring itself. Right. Okay. Move. Um, let's see here. <laughs> okay. That one's a little bit. I have some on here that are a little abstract. Let me. Let me. Okay. This is. Don't pay attention to that door because it would be a plain door that would that would uh, take you into the prep area. But this is the the south doorway here. Mm -hmm. And then you walk underneath existing uh, second floor structure and would move into the um, the L at that point. Let's see. Let's move right along. Let's see here. Here's another view of the the interior. Again, you can see all of the the sort of lower structure here and then the upper structure there for the second floor. Can I, can I ask a question about the second floor? Sure. I think I understand why it's impossible to make it ADA compliant, and I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, is anyone going to be unhappy about about that? Well, no one will be able to go up there. It's um, oh, okay. Sort of an equal opportunity <laughs> situation, and it'll really be used to just okay. Well, as soon as you said no one. You answered my question. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, uh, Anne, where are those nice the drawings that you sent that Michael did of with the artifacts in the exhibit? Let's see. Hang on one second. I, I we did see those. Those were sent to us. So yeah. Possible exhibit. Oops. You know, as as and as part of this, I if you had a chance to. Um, look through the team that we've assembled. One of, I mean, one of the silver linings for for us with COVID is that we received a a sizable CPA grant to remove the artifacts. And I I can't remember when I last saw you, but last summer Sharon Merman, who some of you know, removed 625 artifacts um, and you know, cleaned them, and they're all stored properly now mm -hmm. temporarily. Um, and this shows you just a tiny subset of those artifacts. But you know the other the other part is as we began to take more time, we realized so many other parts needed to be done. We needed to hire structural engineers, and we've got this like really great team. They're internationally known. I, I guess one of the pieces, which I think many of you have heard me say over and over again, is just one of the aspects that's so exhilarating about working at Historic Northampton right now, is that it's just a very exciting chapter and we pulled in all these great people. The, the, the woman that Betty referenced earlier is a former colleague of hers from Washington who is sort of, you know, again, like the nat, like the go-to gal on a national level. And so we've got these terrific timber framers Alicia Spence, who some of you know, she, she lives in Florence, but she works all over the world on timber frames. We've, um, and through Anne, we've got another great engineer. It's just a, it's a very strong team. And an archaeologist who did a project for us a couple of years ago, he will do the archaeological work. So prior to any of the alterations, you know, we will have that investigation done that will all be permitted through Mass Historical Commission. But you all are our first, you're our first stop. So we would welcome any reactions, suggestions, thoughts um, as we move as we move ahead. And I'll just mention a couple other pieces. You know, it's one of those other things where Betty and I thought, okay, we'll just like, we'll clean out the barn. We'll get it in a place where people can go in. But you realize, well, the, the electrical is not terrible, but it's not really great. And it's certainly not, up to par when we're thinking about having uh, public access and, and really wanting to highlight and, uh, and, and illuminate these artifacts in a way that when people come in, the, the space 
as as Anne used that word activates you know they it really people will see the volume they'll, they'll, they'll see the beauty of the building we can use it the lighting to help interpret the building to spotlight the artifacts artifacts that we draw in so you know there's that major upgrade to electrical as well as many of the structural pieces which have gone through you know Alicia Spence has gone through again in, in conjunction with these structural engineers. So it'll be a stamped plan. It'll, I don't know, I guess I'm, I, I'm, I'm proud, very proud of the direction we're going because I think it will be an asset that really as our community, not so much, I mean, yes, historic Northampton, but really as a community that we will really be proud of and that people will begin to say, oh, well, did you know there's a theater program happening at the barn? You know, and it'll be a space with uh, really active programming. It won't just be a thing that we protect and preserve and, and renovate, but it'll be a, a space that people will, will want to come to. Mm. That's really great. Thank you. Um, do any uh, other, any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Well, just, just a comment. I'm impressed by the combination of carefulness and imagination that's gone into this. So I feel very good about it. Thank you. are here. Anybody else? Yeah, I agree. I think the alterations and replacements are, you know, very well thought out and sensitive to the original building. Um, I think all the additions are done for the right reason, accessibility, and, you know, I'm happy to see the slate roof be preserved and, you know, so many of the clapboards um, so I think this is done with the utmost care, not that that's surprising from the past work done at historic Northampton, but um, yeah. it's great stuff. Others? Barbara, do you have any comments? Or Harvey? Well, well, I'm on the board, so I've been oh, through correct. this. I was one of the people who helped <laughs> clean out the barn too. But um, I, I feel as if this has just been so thoughtfully done um, and uh, really aiming to preserve the look on the outside, which is really more what, I, I, as um, stewards, I think we're still concerned primarily with the exteriors, I, I believe. Um, but- uh, I oh, think, you mean uh, the commission? You're yeah, the commission, yeah, sorry, the commission. Um, so I think that um, it's, that it, the, the plans are very sensitive to that. Even if, I mean, but it's true, why just save the building if, if it can't really can't be used by anybody? And I think this is a, a good plan for it being both preserved and usable and accessible to lots of people and lots of different types of uses used by different groups. And uh... the historic preservation restriction covers all major work. Um, it's not just limited to the exterior. So, uh, so the entirety of this proposal would be within the, okay. the parameters of the preservation restriction. Thanks, because I, I just, I hadn't read that, the rest, I hadn't gone through that recently. Thank you for that. So Sarah, could, could you say uh, what part of the restriction says that? Uh, it's the premises covers the, it's in the definition of the premises. So it's everything, not just the exterior. Harvey, did you have anything you wanted to add? Just to say, I think it was great. I think we're ready to proceed to a vote, aren't we? I don't think we, we, we don't have to vote on this, do we, Sarah? Okay, then let's uh, not. Uh, yes, you do. So um, oh, we do. Okay. this does require yeah. a vote. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to add that I, I think that um, it's just so great to see you making history come alive. I think that um, that's just so needed, especially today, about how um, history gets dismissed so much and it makes us less wise. And I think you're helping us to become a wiser, um, a wiser public. And I did have two questions. Um, one about the gutters on the roof. Are you planning, what material you're planning to use for that, Anne? Hmm. You know, I, I thought that question would come up. It really, it, prob it probably has a lot to do with, with price. You know, if you, if you had your druthers, you know, it would be something like copper. Right. Um, but 
as we all know, copper is exceedingly expensive. So, yeah. you know, it may be, uh, maybe it galvanized. Yeah. Okay. The, the, you know, another, another piece to it that I think it's important for us to take into account is, you know, the kind of the resiliency models that, that we're all looking at in terms of climate change and extreme weather and making sure that our gutters are, that we do whatever, whatever the material is that we, that we, um, anticipate the frequency of more extreme storms. And I know, mm -hmm. you know, a lot, a, lot, a lot of municipalities are, are thinking about this um, as they move forward mm -hmm. with their vulnerability plans. Yeah. And we're also thinking about, you know, we're so close to the property line on our um, east side that we're not anticipating, you know, bringing water from the roof down into that area. So it would all go to the west side of the property. And then we would uh, carry that to the catch basins and so forth. So, um, so it would be a bigger gutter because it wouldn't be uh, going in two directions and it would all be going mm -hmm. one direction. Mm -hmm. well, 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 I, I see that Fred Zimnock has a question, but I just wanna add a couple other pieces. You know, I think, I mean, this is um, it, the, all these different layers that come together. And as Ann mentioned um, about the drainage and, and trying to think long-term in terms of uh, the French drains that we install along uh, the out, outer edge so that we try and eliminate future uh, water issues. But um, you know, a couple of years ago in 2018, we, we shrank, uh, shrunk our our parking lot in order to have more green space and um, a better safety design. And as part of that, we did install these two leaching basins because we had an existing flooding issue. So that's where Anne is mentioning that they'll tie into. Mm -hmm. But the other piece that's really kind of just been so nice for, for all of us connected with Historic Northampton is just how much more use the community has. So many more people walk through our our property either coming from Graves Avenue or to and from Bridge Street School. So one of the other components that we had considered that um, that we knew was coming down the pike when we develop, redeveloped and redesigned the parking lot is to figure out how we can have especially the school children cross our driveway and rather than right now what happens is they sort of walk through the parking lot which is not at all what we want to have happen is to integrate and have have um, more defined walkway cut across from our brick walkway and then loop past this new patio and then take the kids and then and everybody else across that green space so they're safely out of that zone and the way our snow storage is the snow storage is at the back so that that walkway will be um, accessible throughout even you know snow seasons. Anyway, it's uh, I know many of you you have careers where where you think about all these parts and pieces, but boy, there's just so many layers, you know, to try and integrate. Um, and so that's that's where we're at at the moment. Okay, um, Fred, Martin, did you have a comment? Anything else too? Did you have another question, Martha? In addition, I do. I, I'm all, all set. Fred, do you have a comment? Uh, I, have, I have actually two questions. Uh, the first question, is there going to be any heating and cooling in the building? No, there, there won't. The other, what we're anticipating are a couple of ceiling fans that, that will move the area around, um, the big gigantic ones, uh, so that when you have an event there that people aren't sweltering, because it really won't be used for events like that in the winter so um. uh, uh, the second question is when you were showing the diagram of the barn and you had the restrooms you were showing the restrooms that are adjacent to that plaza it looks like there was an external door to the restrooms was that really a door there or was i seeing things or it's something else uh let's see you're talking from near the plaza fred yeah, is that a door? Oh, this door right no, here? No, no. Yeah, was that a door? Yes, that's an existing door. And it's it's right next to a window on the front of the facade. 
So the restrooms will be uh, available to people outside the building. That, uh, when, when Historic Northampton has an event going on, they will be able to use these restrooms and have the possibility of either having this door locked or have it open. So these could operate independently or that could just all be open when there's a big event going on. Okay. And uh, the third question is, will you have leaf guards on the gutters? Will I have leaf? Leaf, what was the question? Sorry. Leaf guards, guards on, on the gutters. Uh, I think you were thinking about that, weren't you, Laurie? What was well, your... I, I know we have a annual maintenance of our gutters, Fred. So... Um... I, I, I don't know, I don't know that structure, so. Thank you. Okay, um, so before we just take a vote, I just wanna put this out there. I don't, I don't think it's gonna be a shoe, but I am working with Anne's husband, Mike, um, on a project of my own, uh, but has no relationship to Historic Northampton, but I just wanted to put that out there. So I think we're ready for a motion. Can I ask one thing, because I, never seem to remember whether because I'm on the board of historic Northampton should I recuse myself from votes all right um, not unless you have a financial interest right. no I no I get absolutely no I give them money I don't get money <laughs> okay all right would someone like to make a motion to I'd approve? like to move approval okay second second okay Harvey um any more discussion Sarah, we'll take a vote, please. Martha? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Dylan? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. And Barbara? Yes. All oh, right, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Lori, Anne, and Betty. Um, it's great work. It's great to see happening. Thank okay. you all for everything you're doing. Thank you. Of course. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night. We are going to move on to the next item of the agenda, which is the request for support from um, for an application from the Michelson Galleries uh, for some facade work on their property at 132 Main Street. And just to um, remind everyone, this is, is within the downtown National Register District. So what we are looking at here is um, determining whether we believe the his building is historically significant. And I think Michael, uh, Richard uh, Michelson is here as well as the structural engineer. Here. No, I'm the, I'm the gallery manager. Oh. Gallery manager, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, yes. Would either of uh, you like to present? Yeah, I, I'd like to thank you for including us in the meeting. Um, we are asking you for support. We have, and I have some pictures I can show you if, you, if you'd like. You know, the, the, um, it's a 1913 building. It's got a sort of a, a big facade on the front uh, that extends above, uh, above the roof. It's a flat roof and this extends above. And what we've had is there's a, there's a large tree that comes from the sidewalk that puts shade onto the building and water is getting in through the limestone blocks and then corroding the masonry underneath. And so we've gotten to a point and we've got a structural engineer report that uh, we're, we're getting fracturing of some of the limestone and it's falling into the street. So what's going to need to happen is it's going to need to be, the limestone blocks are gonna to need to be lifted off the top of the, the Capitol. The masonry interior is gonna to need to be rebuilt and then it's gonna to need to be put back and then all sealed up. Um, which is, you know, and we've gotten at least one Mason quote, we're waiting on another and a roofer quote, and it's just beyond our capability. Um, the, um, the, the, the area in question is limits, of course, because it's a historic building to what we can do. We can't just remove it and rubber over it. Um, you know, we, we have to rebuild it um you know sort of the way it is um we we've applied for the emergency you know we didn't want to wait till the fall because we really can't go through another winter because the water's getting into the cracks and then freezing and expanding 
So we're looking for the CPA funds to be able to uh, you know, fund its reconstruction. Um, I understand that it's not customary to fund commercial businesses, you know, um, but the, the area in question is front facing to the street. It's a fairly significant and prominent part of the building. Um, the facade itself really has no relation to our business except for housing it. Um, you know, it doesn't sort of help our business you know, in any way. It, it's just up there and it faces the street, uh, adds a lot to the character of the city. Um, and it's a fairly prominent space in town. It's right at the center. Um, and so uh, if you want, I can show you some pictures of, of the facade and some of the issues up there, if you think that's relevant to, to the discussion. Did everyone have a chance to look at, thank you, Paul. Yep. Did everyone have a chance to look at uh, the photos that were included in the application? Yes. I did. Yes. Okay, Dylan, yeah. Barbara, I'm assuming you're nodding. Okay. Um, I think we'll hold off on that. Um, and I would ask if uh, commissioners have questions for Mr. Gula. Well, I have a question, a couple of questions. Um, I guess I'm a little confused about why you think the tree is causing this problem. I mean, I understand that they would cast shade. It's not, the water's not evaporating. So it, it, okay. it doesn't evaporate. So we have, there's, there's another side of the building where you're getting some fracturing as well, but nowhere near to the, the, uh, the, um, the extent on that corner. So what you get is you get water in there, the sun doesn't hit it, it doesn't evaporate as much and it causes it causes much more seepage into the between the limestone blocks. Right, so, but if they've been properly mortared, that, I mean that shouldn't be happening anyway. So well, it, it does. The mortar wears out. You know, we we sort of we've gone up there several times to sort of have that mortar re repaired. Um, you know, and it just wears away. You know, I mean, I think that over time you're starting to get the block, and then the blocks start to move. So then the mortar doesn't doesn't do its, you know, it's too, too big an area for it to be, for the mortar to be useful anymore. Because what you're getting is actually movement to those limestone blocks uh, out yeah. of position. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to just back off on my questions because I think these will be questions that the Community Preservation Committee will ask you. Um, <coughs> I, I am the representative to that committee for the commission. Um, and probably a lot of others too. But I think what we're looking at here tonight is really uh, whether this commission feels that this building is of historical significant, significance. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? <coughs> you it, and we, you gave a date on your letter. Um, it was constructed in 1913. Um, do we know anything about the architect or any of the circumstances around that? I don't know anything about the architect. Um, I know it's, you know, I, I know that there are buildings in town that are uh, that are older than this, and I think it's one of the um, sort of as, as far as one of the more elaborate constructions with the columns and the and the capital up top. Um, I don't know uh, the history behind the architect and and who made it, um, but I can certainly provide that to the preservation committee as as much as is known. The question I would have is if the committee uh, doesn't think it's uh, architecturally significant, uh, would we be allowed to just repair it without rebuilding it as it appears now? I was under the impression we couldn't. So this building is listed on the National Register of Historic Places as part of the downtown district. So you are eligible to apply for CPA funding. Um, even if the commission doesn't determine at this point that, right. that they um, mm -hmm. determine that the building is significant. Right. Um, so you're, you're more looking for a request of support for the committee. But no, um, if you are proposing changes to the facade of the building, you would have to go through the Central Business Architecture Committee. No, we're not looking for any changes to it. We're just looking to reconstruct it for stability. Well, I, I, to my mind, there's no question that this is an historically significant building. <clears throat> and as Paul said, a very prominent one uh, with long history in the town as being a bank for many, many years, for decades. 
and uh, was, you know, a lot of it's preserved be when it un con um, converted to a gallery space. Um, but, and I appreciate the fact that, I mean, this is quite a price tag that uh, you're proposing, or you're, you, you've uh, uncovered or whatever, but, um, it, uh, but I appreciate the fact that, and I think it's important that the what's up there, that structure that isn't, should be replaced and repaired, not um, the other option, which I know would be much less expensive. But the one question I have, and again, this may be more, I and mean, Martha might be able to talk to this, but I noticed that you're asking for over 100% of the cost from the CPA. And I know that the CPA usually likes to see some other support or other sources of funding with a project. And I'm just wondering that as the owner of the building, is there any chance even that you could say you would contribute 10% of the cost of the project? Just something to, um, so that you're not asking for 100%. Um, and that, that was my thought when I looked at your budget and, and what you're asking for. Well, but I don't um, think there's any question this is a significant right. building and it need, and obviously needs this for safety and, and also to preserve the building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've noticed the barriers there for quite a while, so I know there's been an issue. Well, I guess I'm the one who has to answer that. Um, I would be more than happy if we could pay 10%. Um, but also, uh, mm -hmm. I'm aware that I've never seen a project of this size that didn't um, go way over budget. And what we were told by the, uh, by the Masons and the engineers is once they actually lift this up, um, they're not exactly sure how bad it's gonna be. Um, so, uh, so we're worried about that. Uh, obviously, um, you know, we are spending and have over the years to keep it, um, to keep it safe and certainly the inside of the building and uh, all that has been expensive to keep going, and that's part of our business because, you know, that's the interior. Um, and uh, uh, so, so if, if it was your um, opinion that we would have, I mean, if we could just not have to repair it and just put rubber over it or something, um, the difference in cost would be like, I mean, incredible. Um, the problem, you know, when we first saw, um, you know, just some little limestone pieces falling off, it didn't seem as like, um, you know, we've seen that occasionally over time, you know, little crumbs kind of coming off. Um, but this time when we had the engineers go up, they said, um, it's at that point, you can't, we can't fix it anymore. The roofers, um, you know, uh, this has to be done. Host, you know, the whole thing has to be taken off. And certainly, um, over the last couple of days, just reading the newspapers of what you know happened in Florida, uh, I haven't slept for a couple of days because the last thing I'm worried about is a little piece of limestone falls out, and we don't fix it in time, and uh, there's a big storm. Uh, and certainly storms are getting bigger. Uh, and what if one of these whole blocks just comes off um, and kills someone? Um, yet at the same time, we're coming off a year and then some of pandemic business. Um, and uh, frankly, um, we're kind of caught in a vice here because uh, we need to fix this as soon as possible regardless uh, I would like to fix it and be able to keep uh, certainly the gallery going and keep the building as it is. Um, but I don't know that we can do that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and I don't want to get down to the point where we have to fix it, take out a loan to fix it, and then sell the building in order to pay for that loan. Uh, but that's not your issue, obviously. That's a whole different issue. Um, no, and I think, um, again, you know, we are just voting on significance. I think uh, Barbara stated that really well. Um, I would just 
give you a couple pieces of advice about going before this community preservation committee. Um, mm -hmm. I think Barbara's comment was very um, right on. Uh, also, if you know if any work has been done on was done on this building before you purchased it, it you know it was eighty years old at the time. Um, does it have a history of you know failures like this? Um, you know that may be hard to find out, but that would be important to know whether this is something that um, you know it has been a continual problem with the building ever since it was erected. Sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing would be, um, do you have any long-term maintenance plans for it? You know, are you one, okay, let's say this work gets done. Like what's the plan to make sure we don't have, you know, grout coming out or mortar coming out and cracking and the roof failing and so forth, because it's a city investment and a, pro a private property essentially mm -hmm. would be, and, you know, the city, in this case, the community preservation committee is going to, going to want to be assured that their money is protected long term. I think the the um, what I've been told by the Mason and the not the engineers is that once the whole once the situ once the area has been repointed and resealed and the interior has been reconstructed, that's not going to be an, it's not going to be as much of an issue because what's happening now is that the move because of what's happening to the interior, the mortar is not working because the the, the blocks are moving are moving to the point where the mortar no longer works and it's been a hundred hundred and something years of the building so they're saying you know once you once you've got that reconstructed and the limestone put put back in place and the mortar put in they're not moving anymore because they're they have a secure foundation they have a, a secure infrastructure mm -hmm. so you're not you're not having that problem of the of the limestone blocks moving and the mortar not doing its job so I think what you have now is a hundred years of um, of wear on the building, a hundred and whatever years. Um, so I mean, we we would continue to do whatever maintenance is necessary as far as keeping that grout in there. But it's not going to be the problem that we have now, which is which is okay. keeping up with the movement of the blocks. And now grout is not the issue. It's um, grout's not going to solve that problem. Okay. Yeah. All right. So these are all going to be questions that you're going to have to answer, um, and just I would be prepared to um, have you know solid answers to them. Mm -hmm. um, I, do other commissioners have questions about the significance? I'm 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 Jonathan? puzzled. I I'm finding this fascinating, but I'm puzzled what the commission. I'm trying to focus on what what was supposed to decide. And I, I not, to, I'm not clear on that. Yes. Yeah, so as uh, my understanding is the Michelson Gallery has come to us to ask for um, a su support for them, putting this application forward to the city of Northampton for funding to replace, you know, to repair this problem that they've got. And we need to weigh in on whether one, we think it's significant and that we would support an application. It is not our job to decide whether this meets CPEA guidelines. Um, whether uh, the okay, Security then. Preservation Committee, you know, thinks this is an appropriate use of public funds, that's not our job. Then, then I would say I feel very supportive. Okay. Any other comments? Dylan, do yeah. you have any thoughts? I, I think it's clearly historically significant mm -hmm. to downtown. It's visually significant to the entire look of that side of Main Street. It's, it's you know, people's history with it as a bank and now as a gallery um, runs very deep in this community. And I think people do care about the building and maintaining the look of it. Um, so I would certainly, and it's over a hundred years old. So right. I would certainly deem it significant. Um, okay. As far as researching the history of maintenance on it, um, it could be that the Gazette had some coverage of maintenance problems in the past. And I know that the staff at Forbes Library, where I work, um, would be happy to look in, in the index and see if we could help track any of that history. Great, great, thank you. Yeah, I think that would be really useful, again, to support your application. Okay, any other questions or comments? Fred, do you have a question? Or is your hand still up from the last one? Uh, no, I do have a question. It's a okay. good question. Is there a B, B form? Is there a B form on this building? 
Well, it's part, it's on the National Register. So it's part of the net down, net downtown National Register district. So I'm assuming that there is, there would have to be. Thank you. Sure. And I just want to add that as far as, you know, contributing or finding other sources, I know Paul has been spending a lot of time trying to find other sources for funding. Um, and Paul, you don't want to talk about that? Everything's been a dead end as far as I Well, think. a lot of the, the, the tax credits, uh, I was told, um, weren't going to be applicable either because of the, the, the amount of money or... Um, uh, there were, there were some state funds that Alan Wolf at the mayor's office was, um, was seeking that may be applicable to us, but he's hitting some roadblocks, but going to let me know as soon as uh, those come in. Um, and for commercial businesses, you know, there's not, there's, there haven't been much. Most of it is for nonprofits, and I've been told that we wouldn't be eligible for those. Um, there are funds from the state that fund this kind of reconstruction, but they have to be applied for from, from, uh, from the city, the mass works and things like that. Um, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't be the kind of thing that we could do. It would be the kind of thing that the mayor would have to initiate, you know, and it would be not just us. It would be, you know, if, if this is happening downtown and right now there are, are two other buildings in town that are covered in scaffolding. Um, you know, and I know that a lot of other businesses in town, you know, they're all getting to be the same age and they're all having masonry problems. You know, that's something that, that the mayor could, could do and, you know, get funding from the state to reconstruct the, you know, the, the historic downtown for any other businesses that are having problems. But, but my, my other funding issues have run into dead end so far. Um, but, you know, we're still, we're, we're still plugging, plugging away, seeing what we can find. Well, that would be also really important to present as well. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? All right. Are we ready to take a vote on this? And this would be to um, uh, determine the significance of the building and to su uh, to support an application to CPA. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm just being dense. That's actually two ways of saying the same thing, right? I mean, what we're saying is we believe it's historical and therefore sort of automatically we support the application. We're not making a separate judgment about supporting the application other than the historical character. I just don't know anything about the CPA funding process. So I'm very comfortable in the historical character. It strikes me as self-evident. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the anything beyond that, I just don't know about. I'm, I'm, I certainly have no objection. I just don't feel competent to make the judgment about how the CPA should do this. No, you, that's not our job. Our job is to say um, we would support, you know, we support the preservation of this building, essentially. And then the CPA decides whether they want to, you know, fund it or not. So I need a motion. Well, I would make, I would make oh. a motion to uh, find this building um, I'm sorry, remind me the address. 132 Main, Main Street. 132, you said? Mm -hmm. yep. 132 Main Street as historically significant. And um, we would also certainly support their application for funds to the CPA. I'll second that. Thank you, Jonathan. Any other discussion? OK, I think we're ready for a vote. Martha? Yes. Harvey? Yes, sorry. Uh, Dylan? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. And Barbara? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. We'll, Thank you. We'll, we'll take all that luck, whatever we're. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I know. The next on the agenda is the Central Business Architecture Committee nominee. And I mentioned this in the chair's report. I just want to give you a little bit more information about this. Um, first of all, this we need to get this done in the next couple of months. It's not something that's super urgent, although um, it'd be good to get some nominees point, put forward. Um, the CBSC, that's the acronym, does not have 
any permit applications in front of them, right? Active permit applications in front of them right now. And this is a, a committee that meets only when they have to review an application. It's not something that meets every month or every two weeks, whatever. Um, and as I mentioned, Pauline was the chair, was the representative from the commission. It's um, you know it's preferable if a commissioner, one of us, uh, serves in that role because you have that connection to this commission and you can provide sort of the interface between the two, but it's not necessary. So we could also put forward um, one or two nominees um, who are outside this commission who we think would be good on that, serving in that role. Um, just wanted to state that it's very important that whoever is appointed to this is nonpartisan and objective. Um, So first of all, I'll ask if anybody on the commission is interested in doing this. Did I hear, did I hear that you were? No, I am the representative to the Community Preservation Committee. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. get that. <clears throat> and I might be interested, but my husband serves on this commission, so I just don't think it's appropriate that I also be on, the, on that commission. Or committee is that a, it's a committee i think it is a committee that's correct committee on that committee only one blumenthal at a time right barbara yeah it would be great <laughs> and we don't always see eye to eye either but that's okay but i, I just feel like it's no you don't not I a, witness not that a good idea. <laughs> it's not a good idea to both be on the same committee Enjoy. anybody else it's not lucky to do Harvey, it's not something you could do. Okay. What about you, Jonathan? Are you, Dylan? No. And ask Craig because they're not I'm, here. I'm totally unqualified. And Are you? I'm, <laughs> I'm certain I don't have the capacity for that right now. And I'm trying to but, be but more I, knowledgeable. I, Go ahead, Barbara. Yeah, I do, I do think, Jonathan, that if you're qualified to be on the historical commission, <laughs> would be equally qualified to be on that because again you're I mean again I know it's not necessarily judging historic value or significance of buildings but it's still reviewing um buildings that are in a um an historic district of yeah, yeah. downtown so I think it brings a lot of the same sensibilities or I feel it should bring a lot of the same sensibilities even though the rules are different we've discovered particularly concerning uh, demolition. Well, but, I appreciate that, but I, I don't think I can add to it, on my No, plate. no, it's fine, but I just wanted to point that out, that I okay. think there's similar qualification. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I think that um, what we may want to do is take a little bit of time to think about this, Sarah, if that's okay, and reconvene at our next meeting um, to see if we um, might want to reconsider or um, whether we can think of others in the community who might be interested in doing this. Um, oh, we have one commission member who's not on this call, Craig. Craig, yep. You yep. might want to ask him whether he has any interest. I have no idea whether he would or not. Yeah. Okay. Sarah, does that work? Yeah, that's fine. There's, urgent, um, right? it, it should be done sometime over the summer, but there's mm -hmm. no need for it. So we're meeting again in July. Um, we'll give some thought to it and um, we can reconvene and put our heads together and see what we think the right thing to do is. So, okay. That's it. All right, we have about 15 minutes left. Um, Sarah did send out a summary of our demolition delay bylaw. And we've been in the process of reviewing that. Um, Sarah, do you want to give kind of a recap of what that is and where we are with that? I apologize ahead of time. Sure. I so. have to leave at about five of five or seven. Okay, so Jonathan, if I live, no problem. Leave while someone's talking, it's nothing personal. We won't take it that way. <laughs> All right. All right. So this, um, you know, the, we thought it would be helpful for the commission to just go over um, all of the roles and responsibilities that they do. So this was the next one um, up for discussion. Um, so I, we, 
we talked about this a few months ago, but it, we didn't have time in the past few meetings. So this is just a you know a summary of the ordinance, um, what it means, and and how the commission um, uh, looks at this and uh, considers whether buildings are significant, and then uh, following that, whether they're preferably preserved. Um, so th this is really just for reference. You know, you can you could keep this on hand um, if we have future applications for demolition and, and you want to just a brief summary of what the commission's role in that process is, um, or if anybody has questions now, we can certainly discuss that. So Jonathan and Harvey, um, I don't believe you were on the commission when we looked at our last demolition review. Am I right about that? Do you remember Warren? It was Warren. you were right, we were not. Okay, so yeah, we were in the thick, thick of something right before you came on. Um, you know, this is a preservation tool that many communities in the state have adopted. Um, I work in a lot of communities around Massachusetts that have done this. And I think that it's becoming increasingly um, not obsolete, but just ineffective. Um, many communities, especially in the eastern part of the state that have adopted this, um, you know, the developers have just, um, you know, figured it out and they factor the delay into their timeline because once the delay is lifted, they can do whatever they want. And um, as long as it you know, meets all the other zoning regulations and so forth. So I think that um, moving forward, you know, we have ours in place. It's a one, up to one year delay. Um, you know, we may, as we go into our planning process that's coming up, think about other tools we could adopt that would be more effective and maybe some tools that are more incentives for preserving historic buildings rather than demolishing them. Um, and then, you know, being fined for doing that. But I, I entertain any other thoughts anybody else has about it. I mean, Barbara, you've been on the commission a long time. You too, Dylan. You know, what do you think the effectiveness has been? Well, I think lots of communities that have these, very few buildings end up being saved. I mean, we have had one in Florence, which is now where the David Bruggle Center is, and that one was adapted and reused. Um, I'm trying to think if there was another one. That I think there was one other one in Florence too. One other one in Florence, yeah, maybe. So it's, you're, more, you're right that most of the time it just delays the inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, you know, I certainly welcome um, uh, discussing what other tools might be better um, for us to use and might have more of an effect mm -hmm. um, in terms of trying to really save structures. Yeah. What about you, Talon? Any thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's become perhaps less effective over the time that I've been on the commission um, as either large institutions have adapted and just given us made the plans two years in advance to begin with, mm -hmm. um, knowing that yeah. we might do this, mm -hmm. or, you know, our pleas over those 12 months have gone on deaf ears or have gone unheard. Um, you know, I, I don't know of community, how, whether they have more success in communities that lengthen it from 12 to 24 months. Um, and it just doesn't yeah, seem, so. it seems yeah, like the people just world, adjust yeah, to that too. Very long. Yeah. yeah. So think about I, how I'm, long. Def I'm definitely open to any ideas that have been, especially those that have been used in other communities that have had any success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one thing that, um, you know, would be helpful is if we can expand our, or maybe further investigate our definition of significance and, and get a better handle on you know, what are the significant resources in the city? You know, what, are, what kind of categories do those fall into that, that are maybe just beyond dates? And, you know, what are those? Um, so we know when someone, a developer wants to come and take a building down that we've already identified the, um, the places that we really want to save and focus our energy that way. Um, well, presumably this, that might be part of our overall preservation plan, I would assume. Yeah. And I don't, we're not really there yet with things that on the agenda, but where do we stand with that process? 
So we're busy sort of wrapping up the fiscal year now and closing out all of the, the grants and projects that we're already working on. But um, starting in, in July and August, we'll think about how best to go out to bid for that. And I should have an update for you probably at the next meeting. Great. Good. Great. Okay. Um, but just Harvey and Jonathan, you understand the, the law, the bylaw, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I'm sure we'll have something in front of us sometime in the next year, probably, probably more than one, just given the rate of um, people flocking to Northampton. So mm -hmm. and wanting, you know, to redo houses. So, okay. Um, if there's no other discussion about that, we can move on. Um, is there any mail, Sarah? There is not. Okay, and any other business of the commission that um, was not foreseen before we adopted the agenda? Okay, if that's the case, um, I would be happy to entertain a motion for adjournment. Oh, happy to, happy to move it. <laughs> See, we, you didn't even have to exit on gracefully. That's right. And we'll be meeting again on July 26th. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, everyone have a great July, great 4th. Okay. And we'll see you um, in a month. Thank you. Stay healthy. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.